Let's get straight into MotoGP. They had the German Grand Prix, and uh, it was a, a story of tragedy for uh, no longer a championship leader, Jorge Martin. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I, I think I jumped and I almost hit the ceiling. Um, at the time when, when it happened, they were just showing him on the little screen while they were showing um, Marquez yeah, yeah, yeah. battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just see, and I saw purple, and I saw it run off into the gravel. I was like, <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah, I look away it for was... one second, and I pick the worst moment to look away. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. It's just unexpected, though. Like, I was just, I, it was, he had two laps, complete control. Two laps to go. Two laps to go, and turn one, he just, yeah. However, um, Peko was really, really nice in saying that he did make almost the identical mistake a lap before because he had gotten up to four tenths. He was very, very close to, yeah, to him. And then he ran wide at that turn one. So he knew that he was going in too hot and he actually Straightened deliberately up. decided to straighten it up a little bit to avoid crashing. And then the next lap it happened to Jorge. But they're both pushing to new limits. You know, they mm. are on qualifying laps every oh, single yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. but hard break you know if as a competitor you know two laps to go i yeah i wouldn't want to be in that motor home no know, and luckily now. uh he's got four weeks or so uh yes. until the <laughs> british grand prix to recover and come back to it but it's going to hurt him for a while uh mentally anyway but uh yeah no they would neck and neck the whole entire race pretty much um like we always see uh, like last time out um bagnaya was about three seconds away Yes. This time around, they were less than a second until he crashed. Of course, then it was four seconds. But uh, second and third, that was a great story. Yeah. Uh, the Marquez brothers. How good. First time uh, a brother group has uh, been on the podium together since 1997. I know. It's so been a really, really long time. It's been since the uh, 500 era, which was Who a... were they? The brothers. Oh, they were um, like they were superheroes back then for for Japanese motorcycle racing. You know, back in the 500 CC era, there were a lot of strong Japanese riders back in back in those days. And the, the two brothers, yeah, they were they were very strong. And also, uh, one of them was a Repsol rider. So yeah, you know, okay. yeah. yeah, really, really cool to see. And uh, yeah, the emotions from the brothers. You know, you mm. showed me that video earlier today. Oh, that was great. Obviously, yeah, the celebration in the back. Yeah, that, that was yeah, so fantastic. Good. That was awesome. And I, I love um how the brothers really celebrate every every milestone every victory every podium uh, they really really celebrate these mm -hmm. days and it's because of all the injuries and you know all the hard times yeah. that, that they've had and you know and then this, this is coming from a diehard rossi fan by the way you know like it's uh yeah, exactly it's, <laughs> but but the sprint was also another great race you mm. know with Jorge martin uh, winning that one and again you know very close so, Miguel Oliveira decided, you know, um, eight rounds or nine rounds in, he decided to wake up and show that he actually can ride a motorcycle and was on the podium. And I find the fascinating, you know, motorcycle racing is only, there's only a few motorsports that this happens and motorcycle racing yeah, is yeah. one of them. Mm. When it comes to contract time, you can actually find riders will actually start to push for dear life and, and yeah, right. try and get a new contract where in Formula One, you can't do that. Like if you're in a house, you're in a house. And if you're yeah. in a stack as sad as it is, the only person to ever do what you just said is Sergio Prince. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did the great couple races to get the Red Bull seat and like, oh no, after that, I'm good. I think someone needs to remind him of that. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point. I think um Sergio Perez uh before the next race should watch Rocky Three. You know, yeah. when then Rocky loses himself and then he comes back. We should just watch the Abu Dhabi uh, sorry, uh, the Bahrain races that he had. Yes. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Twenty. Was it twenty fourteen? He came he, from last. He came he, third the race. Point. Yeah, in yeah. the pink uh, force India. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he got spun lap one. Yeah, and then won the race. Yes. And then the next day, got a call from Christian. <laughs> I think what's um, I think the resilience of Mark Marquez um is that's definitely good. something mm. to highlight. Um, to crash and to go out there during practice too with sore ribs and a, and a cracked finger. 
barely making it like he he went into q1 but just you know like it was only by like two tenths of a second with only one lap and missing out the rest of the session and and then you know that race you know to start 13th to finish second i mean we see marcus do it week after week after week but yeah. no one else can do that no he, no he is like um you know when a car's all battered and bruised and she's got tape all over it yeah that's him yeah, he's still <laughs> on pace. Literally. Yeah. I, I always remember the video where um he's talking about when he was talking to Honda and he actually like took his top like off and showed the scar and he looked at the Honda boss. He goes, This isn't to come here to finish sixth or seventh. This is to win. Mm -hmm. With you or without you. Yeah. And he so he did. And yeah. he left. Um it's the best move he's ever made. Like yes. those Honda mm -hmm. bikes, I'm pretty sure the highest finisher was fifteenth yeah and there are news uh come out i mean maybe by the time this goes live uh, it will already be not breaking news but um <laughs> uh, the, the, the Gen antonio will be back in a vr46 bike he will be in a 2025 factory bike he will be a ducati contracted rider not a privateer rider which means ducati own him not vr46 um mm. frankie morbidelli looks like will be a vr46 rider coming back, you know, because Pramac is moving to Yamaha. Poor, yeah, sure. Poor, poor Pramac. And uh, we no are expecting uh, Fabian Aldeguer to be uh, with Alex Marquez at Grissini. Okay. Speaking of Pramac, uh, Miller's also been poised to maybe go there too. Yes. Uh, which is interesting. So. And Andrea Iannone from World Superbikes. He's coming back, is he? Maybe. I mean, it's all, it all comes down to sponsorship, Bunny, and mm. who, I mean, who can bring the better package. Yeah. They'll be coming back and finishing last because they're on Yamaha's. <laughs> well, <laughs> or mid pack, yeah. mid pack. Better than Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. True. Honda, Honda's now claimed uh, the bottom spot. And some. And uh, Luca Marini has scored a point. Did because he? Because three riders oh, in right. front of yeah. him had the tire issues. Oh, okay. The tire pressure issues. That was the Take last race, win. wasn't it? No, 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 that was this, this one. Race. Oh, really? Marquez had, uh, he actually got tie pressure issues last time. Yeah, that's so what I was he, thinking. Yeah, that's what people you think of. But no, that's good. Good. And speaking of Marquez, excited to see how he does uh, with that Ducati factory ride next year, too. That'll be cool. Um, Alex, you want to run through the top 10 of yes. the Grand Prix? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'll go for top 15 because that's the points. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Peke Banyaya uh, won the race. Both Marquez brothers, second and third, Mark then Alex. I'm pretty sure Alex just let Mark through in the last lap. Oh, no. Mark was pushing. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> it looked Mark, like he just... No, no, no. Mark was about a half a second a lap quicker. Mm. At the time, he was just thinking that it was for third. Uh, but he really, really badly wanted that podium and he wanted those points. And, yeah, his lap times were really good. Yeah, okay. Uh, then Bastianini is... Got his new contract. He's going to Tech Three, isn't he? Uh, yeah. It's gas, no gas. longer going to be called uh, Gas Gas. Uh, it's just KTM now. Oh, so all four bikes will be identical. Oh, that's good. No, that's. I'm glad I brought it up. Then I yeah, know. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Franco Morbidelli fifth. He had a great run. I actually thought he was going to get a podium at one point. That was pretty cool. Yeah, mm. I think he got a little bit too excited at the beginning of the race and didn't really manage his tires. Yeah, burnt him out. Which is. Which is normal, you know. You see the front again, and you're like, "Oh my god, I can lead a race!" Yeah. <laughs> oh, my tires are gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's exactly what happened. Uh, Miguel Oliveira sixth, uh, Acosta seventh, uh, Benseki eighth, Brad Binder ninth, Raul Fernandez tenth, uh, Fabio Quartararo eleventh, Maverick Vinales, who went off, he should have been in the top five. Yes. Uh, Jack Miller thirteenth, Takanami Kagami leading the Hondas in fourteenth, and Luca Marini fifteenth. And also, um, Pedro Costa has officially run out of time to become the youngest ever MotoGP race winner. So, Mark Marquez gets to keep that. Oh, okay. Until oh. the next uh, phenomenon. The next Marquez. The next Marquez <laughs> comes along. Yeah, literally. But no, brilliant, uh, brilliant Grand Prix. A new record for Saxon Ring 284,000 people. Wow. Sheesh. It was incredible. MotoGP is um, as popular as ever. A lot of people doubted, you know, when Rossi left, what would happen, you know, to the popularity of the sport. Sure. But it's, yeah, it's better than ever. 284 people were there, thousand people were there, but 5,000 didn't see the start because of the flares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see them? They were bright yellow. Oh, uh, don't worry. The same thing is going to happen at Taylor and Ben. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> I was like, these guys cannot see a thing. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be epic.